people are always going to tell you that you have to be of strong character to move mountains. But I'm going to tell you something a little different today. I'm going to be telling you about how certain mountains in my life were conquered, not when I was strong or capable, but when I was weak and vulnerable. So the last few days, I've been really stressing about this talk. And um, a lot of people ask me, they're like, hey, Suzanne, I heard you're going to be on TED. And I was like, yeah. And they're like, so what are you going to be talking about? And I was just like, well, vulnerability. And they were just like, oh, OK. Well, well good luck with that. So, so I freaked out. And um, I, I went up to the organizers, and I was just like, no, I am not going up on stage, and I'm not talking about vulnerability, because it's going to turn out to be some emo fest. And I'm not an emo person. I don't want to do that. So I chickened out, and um, a few days before, um, before I had to come up here, I actually rewrote my entire speech. And I was really proud of this new talk because it had lots of pretty slides and funny jokes in it. I even managed to include a slide of Kill Bill, which is quite rare if you think about it. Vulnerability Kill Bill doesn't really jive. So I performed it in front of um, the organizers, and I was met with a reaction that looked something like this. <laughs> now, I was really upset because I had stayed up till 5 a.m. to write this new talk for them, and the only reaction they could give me was, mm. So I said, okay, what's wrong? And they were just like, well, well, Suzanne, it just, it just doesn't seem very vulnerable, not like your first one. And I was like, what's not vulnerable about it? I mean, I'm perfectly willing to go up there on stage in front of 300 people and vulnerably admit that sometimes I knit on a Friday night. Do you think this is something that I like to admit? <laughs> and they were just like, well, no. So um, this taught me something about vulnerability. You can't box it. Oh, so this actually led <laughs> to a mini breakdown on Tuesday. And um, I got really, really angry at vulnerability. I was okay with it before. In fact, we were almost starting to become friends when it wasn't intruding into my comfort zone, but now it just pissed me off. And um, this made me realize something about vulnerability. You can't just box it up. It doesn't work that way. When you try to control vulnerability, basically it loses its value. And while my other talk was good, and while it was still me, it was a me that was perfectly contented with sharing with the rest of the world. It was a me that I wasn't afraid to expose. And the reason I'm standing up here in front of you today was to fulfill a promise that I made where I said I was going to be more open and vulnerable. And I said I was going to start taking steps of faith. And I realized something. You can't say that you're going to step out of your comfort zone but yet still want to feel like you're safe and secure. It doesn't work that way. So I'm standing here, and I'm scared because public speaking is not my thing, and because vulnerability is something I struggled with for a long time, and it's something I'm still working through up till today. Because it's hard to admit that you can't, especially in a society that constantly pushes you to have to be capable, to have to excel to have to succeed. The words, I can't, or can you help me, is rarely uttered. And in Asian culture, we love to be in control of everything. And as students, we go for the countless tuitions to get those 12 A's. We study so hard to get into the perfect university, and we search so hard for the perfect lives. But some of us study so hard search so hard and try so hard, only to end up in jobs and lives where we constantly ask ourselves each day, what am I doing? Why am I here? What is my purpose? Now, I know a little thing or two about being pushed out of your comfort zone. When I was um, a student in university, my sister and I, for our first two years, we lived above a goth pub, this one actually. <laughs> And um, our neighbors were um, drug dealers, and uh, I found out later that they actually ran a high-class whorehouse. <laughs> so um, in my final year, I had the opportunity to live alone, and I really treasured this privacy. And more so, I loved the self-contained lifestyle I led, which was basically I could do what I want, when I wanted, all on my own terms. 
And in society, we place a great deal of value on people who are self-dependent and on those who are seemingly in control. There's a term for that. It's called individualism. And the whole concept places great value on self-reliance, on personal freedom, on, in, oh, on individual freedom, on personal control, and on privacy. And there is nothing wrong with that. But it allows us to focus so much on ourselves. And sometimes the self-dependency can actually give us a false illusion of freedom. And I was always the sort of person who tended to view the need to be with people all the time as a weakness. To me, self-dependency, emotional detachment, that was strength. So when I lived alone, um, I wasn't rec a recluse or lonely, if that's what a lot of people would <laughs> like to think. But um, I became very, very self-dependent. And also, I placed a lot of my value and a lot of identity on my home because it was where I felt most safe and it was where I felt most secure. And more importantly, it was a space where I had complete control of. But this all changed in a moment because a few weeks before my graduation, my flat burned down. And um, this really shook me because when you place so much of yourself into something and when it leaves you, it leaves you in this moment where you feel where you feel like you're sort of floating and you don't really know what's going on. And, but it taught me a very, very important lesson. And that was people are far more important than possessions. And also we can live our lives building up these bubbles around ourselves, directing our lives to go a certain way in a certain direction, but that can all change. And we can, and we can bury ourselves deeper within ourselves, or we can build the walls up higher to hide from the hurt, to hide from the shame, to shy away from vulnerability. But when we do that, when we numb ourselves to emotion, what happens is that you will become to this point where you're in a constant state of default. And it made me realize that self-dependency and emotional detachment that doesn't necessarily mean strength. In fact, a lot of times, we can actually be building up our own prison walls. When I started Culture Run, Culture Run actually came about during a period when I was lost and lonely. I had just come back to KL, and um, I didn't have very many friends when I first came back. Um, I was in a city that was both familiar and unfamiliar to me at the same time. I was lost and directionless in terms of career. But I realized it's during extreme moments of vulnerability that can give birth to innovation, to faith, and to hope for change. And for me, I realized that um, I have put so much of myself, I, I realized that um, I have put so much of myself in trying to look at what I wanted and what I wanted to do. But it was in this moment when I was searching that I realized the meaning in people and the strength in communities. And a lot of times we tend to think that we will lose our identity when we belong to the com into a community, but that's not true. In fact, when you're in a community, it actually gives you strength from others to do what you cannot achieve by yourself. And um, my sister and I, we started Culture Run wholly incapable. We're both arts majors. Um, we have no background in technology and no business background either. I'm so crappy in technology, I can't even use a smartphone. And as for building communities, I used to be a borderline hermit as a child. And for like starting a learning platform, I was such a terrible, terrible student. But the reason we took that step of faith was because we saw the opportunity to serve a purpose bigger than ourselves. And the reason we started Culture Run was because we saw that, it was, we saw that there was people out there in the city who wanted to learn passionately, who wanted to learn outside of their classrooms and outside of an education system. We also saw the multitude of skills, knowledge, and talents out there in the communities which can be tapped on and which can be learned from. And we believe in the everyday expert, that everyone has skills, passions, and talents worth sharing in the community. And more importantly, 
We wanted to build human connection. For us, it is so important that Culturon brings together people of like-minded passions and interests together, and this can form friendships and build communities. And I won't lie, it was hard. The first few months were very, very hard. And I remember going into meetings and sitting there and getting asked all these hard, difficult questions that I couldn't answer. And I felt ashamed. I was ashamed that I wasn't more knowledgeable. I was ashamed that I wasn't smarter. I was ashamed that I wasn't more business savvy. And I would go home and I would cry. I would cry because I felt so stupid and I felt that I couldn't live up to what I had created because I thought in my position I had to know everything. Or at least I had to know something. But there were very many times that I knew nothing. But this taught me that I cannot depend solely on myself. And it also taught me that I should reach out to other people for help. But it's hard. It is so difficult to say that you can't. It is so difficult to say, I'm struggling, can you help me? I'm weak. And that takes courage. And in, our, in, our, in today's terminology, we tend to bestow courage upon those who do brave and heroic deeds. And one of that is valuable, and this is very, very important. The original definition of courage actually comes from the Latin word core, which means heart. And the original definition of courage is to tell the story of who you are with your whole heart, soul, and mind. Courage is the ability to say, I'm sorry first. It's the ability to be compassionate and kind without expecting anything in return is to act in faith, is to stand up for what you believe in despite the consequences, is to invest in a relationship even though there's no guarantee, is to love without fear. And this talk, my sister and I learned very much about courage, but we also learned to depend so much on prayer, on family, friends, and on complete strangers to get us through and it's what brought us through, and it's what is continuing to bring us through up till today. Because in society, we tend to be ashamed. We are very ashamed to admit our failures and faults. We don't want to admit our weaknesses in fear of losing face. But when we do that, it becomes poison in your hearts, and it eats you up from the inside out. Because vulnerability is not inward looking. It is outward focus. It is not self-absorbed. It is not attention seeking. Vulnerability has nothing to do about being careless or dismissive with our emotions. It, has, it doesn't have anything to do with going on Facebook and providing a play-by-play -play update of your life. That is not vulnerability. <coughs> Because vulnerability is a relational emotion that seeks to uplift and be thoughtful in all its honesty. It seeks to bring out the best in others, not to shame and not to destroy. And it is so humbling because it pushes away the mountains of pride inside of you. It seeks to understand. It seeks to add value to the lives of others. It doesn't overcomplicate matters of the heart. Rather, it helps us to love in all its simplicity. And there is this quote by C.S. Lewis that I really, really love, and I would just like to share with you guys. It's called, The Risks of Love. Love anything, and your heart will certainly be wrung and possibly broken. If you want to keep it intact, you must give your heart to no one, not even to an animal. Wrap it carefully round with your hobbies and your little luxuries. Avoid all entanglements. Lock it up safe in the casket 
or coffin of your selfishness. But in that casket safe, dark, motionless, airless, it will change. It will not be broken. It will become unbreakable, impenetrable, irredeemable. To love is to be vulnerable. Thank you. Thank you.